Hi, this is Ron Rowland for Money and Markets TV. The ETF industry is on a roll in 2011, with sponsors bringing out innovative new products at a record pace. As of this week, the number of U.S. listed exchange traded funds and notes stood at 1,176. 77 new ETFs and ETNs have been created already this year, and not one has been closed or liquidated. Today, I want to highlight a few of the new crop that seem to be gaining traction and a couple you may want to avoid. First up is the Wisdom Tree Asia Local Debt Fund, ticker symbol ALD. It came out last month with an unheard of $145 million in initial assets. Most new funds come to market with just three to $5 million in seed money. ALD will try to maximize its total return by investing in local debt denominated in Asian regional currencies, excluding Japan. Top holdings include paper from Indonesia, Malaysia, South Korea, Thailand, Singapore, and Australia. Next is the PowerShares Senior Loan Portfolio, ticker symbol BKLN. It's the first floating rate bond ETF. These are a tiny step up from high yield or junk bonds because senior loans are ranked higher than a company's other debt and sometimes secured by collateral. But the really interesting thing about this fund is that its portfolio consists of debt whose interest rates reset periodically, every three months or so, similar to an adjustable rate mortgage. That reduces your risk from rising interest rates, but it still doesn't remove the risk of the borrowers defaulting. The IQ Global Agribusiness Small Cap Fund targets another new niche. Several ETFs already cover the food production sector, but crop zeroes in on the smallest 10% of these stocks, potentially giving you a new way to profit from rising food prices. Factor Shares is a new sponsor with a new twist. ETFs that hold spreads in various markets. That means you can take a bullish stance on one market while simultaneously taking a bearish stance on another. For instance, if you're bullish on bonds and bearish on stocks, you can buy the Factor Shares 2X T-Bond Bull S&P 500 Bear Fund, ticker symbol FSA. Factor Shares also offers a fund that takes the opposite approach. In addition, it has similar funds that try to profit from the spread between stocks and the U.S. dollar, gold, and crude oil prices. But all of them have two times leverage, so they aren't for the faint of heart. The Advisor Shares Active Bear Fund is the first actively managed short selling ETF. The managers of HDGE use fundamental research to build a portfolio of 20 to 50 stocks they think are overpriced. Inverse index funds have been available for years, of course, but this is the first one that uses the ETF format to pick individual stocks that seem likely to decline. And finally, there's the Wisdom Tree Managed Futures Strategy Fund. It tracks the S&P Diversified Trends Indicator, which takes a long or short position in 24 commodity and financial futures contracts. That makes WDTI an absolute return ETF meaning its goal is to achieve positive performance in both up and down markets. So if you want a well-balanced portfolio, this fund could be a great diversification tool. Now that I've told you about some promising new ETFs, I have to mention a few that are less so. The list includes the PAX MSCI EFE ESG Index ETF, the Global X Russell Emerging Markets Growth ETF, the Global X Russell Emerging Markets Value ETF, and the RBS US Midcap Trend Pilot ETN. These may not all be bad funds or bad concepts, but for one reason or another, investors are not putting money into them. Without assets, the sponsors can't generate fees, and without sufficient fees, the ETFs are not profitable and run the risk of being shut down. So enter at your own risk. Until next time, I'm Ron Rowland for Money and Markets TV.